Hello, welcome to the Monday, September 27th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. These day, one of the main sources how users are connecting to networks is mobile devices. And of course, they may not necessarily connect to your network, but they may connect uh, various uh, ISPs and uh, connectivity methods like that in order to connect to your resources, like, for example, Exchange servers. We got an interesting uh, diary by Xavier where he outlines how you can use this to your advantage in order to get an inventory of all of the mobile devices or devices in general being used in your organization. As part of the Microsoft Exchange platform, you'll be using something called Active Sync. And Active Sync does report back quite a bit of details about the particular client connecting. So you should be able to, for example, identify what hardware is being used, whether it's an Apple device or Samsung or LG or whatever, but also what operating system and version is installed on that device. So this would, for example, help you identify devices that are out of date and that may not necessarily connect to your network directly, but only connect to it by connecting to the exchange server. And talking about connections uh, to exchange servers uh, on Friday, I believe it was, uh, where I mentioned a vulnerability that was discovered by GuardiCore. And the nature of this vulnerability was that the exchange clients are attempting to auto discover the configuration, also the host name of a local exchange server. And in the process, they may be leaking credentials uh, to various servers around the internet, in particular, anything discover dot and then a top level domain. We now have a list of possible domain names that are abusing this. I'll post a link in the show notes to it, but apparently there are so far 14 different domains that were identified that uh, will actively downgrade the uh, connection attempt. What this means is that if a user is connecting to that domain, it'll send back an for one error with an authorization request for basic authentication, which in turn would then, based on the scenario described by GuardiCore, potentially leak credentials. Now, one thing to remember here that uh, this may not just affect the uh, actual top level domains, but also uh, these uh, domains that act like uh, top level domains. Like, for example, in the .uk top level domain, we have like uh, .co, .uk, and uh, .ac, .uk, and similar domains. They're typically tracked by Mozilla's public suffix list. So if you're setting up a block list uh, for your network, uh, use Mozilla public suffix list, uh, not just the list of top level domains in order to create the block list, then just autodiscover dot and then uh, whatever top level domain or public suffix that you can find. And of course, from a detective point of view, just uh, look for any DNS request that contains the word autodiscover. Microsoft also announced that they will uh, disable basic authentication in exchange. Uh, now, they actually planned uh, doing that earlier this year, but because of the pandemic and uh, people having a hard time uh, sort of managing some of uh, these larger updates, uh, they pushed it back to later this year, but uh, come October, uh, this should happen. Bug bounty programs are commonly used these days uh, by various uh, tech companies in order uh, to solicit uh, vulnerability reports from the community. But uh, these uh, bug bounty programs, well, uh, they also need to be managed and uh, companies need to meet researchers' expectations in order for them to be successful. Latest example here on probably how not to do a bug bounty program is Apple yet again. Security research Researcher Dennis Tokarev uh, did a report for different iOS vulnerabilities uh, to Apple. Only one of them has been fixed so far. And essentially for being frustrated uh, with Apple's uh, bug bounty program, Dennis now released details regarding the remaining three unpatched vulnerabilities. The blog post was originally released in Russian. I am linking uh, to an English translation in the show notes. 
And then we got a couple of miscellaneous critical updates that you should be aware of on this beautiful Monday CVE 2021-34770. That's a critical vulnerability in Cisco's control and provisioning of wireless access points protocol or CAP, WAP, I guess. It's pronounced CVSS score of 10 can be used uh, to execute arbitrary code with admin rights on affected devices, like for example, your Catalyst 9000 uh, wireless uh, controllers. And SonicWall released an update for its SMA 100 series devices. So that's all the way from 200 up to uh, 500. The vulnerability being addressed here, CVE 2021, 20,034 does uh, allow for an unauthenticated remote attacker to obtain administrator access in the underlying host by deleting some files. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.